Summer is a season that calls us to embrace its vibrant energy, to bask in its long days and warm nights, and to embrace a sense of freedom. It's a time that many eagerly anticipate, dreaming of adventures, gatherings, and the simple joys of life. For me, summers have always been a time for adventure, the open road, the thrill of new projects, and the solace found in nature was always anticipated all year long. Each trip, each project is a testament to overcoming obstacles, a way of telling myself that I still have it in me, that my illnesses are not the boss of me. But this summer has been different. The pain has gotten to a whole new level. It's not just a hurdle to overcome, it's a wall that seems to grow taller with each passing day. Driving long distances has become impossible, and those spontaneous escapes into nature, the ones I lived for, have become rare. Accepting this reality has been hard, and I had to adapt. My adventures have become more local. A picnic in the park, picking flowers, a short walk. And while these moments are beautiful in their own right, they remind me of my current reality and the freedom I once had. Projects like building my van and planning upgrades remain untouched. The strength I once had feels distant, replaced by an intense pain and fatigue that dictates my every move. Well, summer is officially here. It is so hot right now, you guys. Even though it's overcast and I thought, okay, this will be the perfect day to do a picnic. It's not gonna have like the harsh sun. It's not gonna be too hot. It is so muggy. And do I love summer? And summer represents a lot more freedom for me because in the winter, I feel stuck in the house a lot because of the cold. The amount of clothing that you have to put on every time you want to just get out of the house, the weight of the clothes on for those that you know, have fibromyalgia and their skin is very sensitive to touch. It's very difficult to have all that weight of jackets and heavier materials and bending to put like big boots on and all those kind of things. It just makes it so much harder to get out of the house. There is this carefree feel in summer that you just slide on some flip-flops and out you go like you don't really have to think about what you're wearing but sometimes it can get a little bit too much summer can bring a lot of like storms and the difference and the changing pressure of storms can be very painful if you have fibromyalgia I don't know if you can hear that, but that was thunder. No wonder why I woke up in so much pain today. I almost didn't come here because I woke up with a horrible migraine and I felt I pulled something on my back while I slept and I could barely move. And I had planned this picnic the day before. I had invited my son to come fishing because he really enjoys fishing. He's just fishing over there and when I woke up this morning I'm like it's not happening this is not happening and I was very frustrated but I took my abortive medication and I had some coffee and I took my time I used my heating pad and then I started to feel better so here we are having our picnic and enjoying a little read in the park but we might get rained on. We'll see. Let's see how long this is gonna last. The other thing about summer is because summers here in Canada are so short and the winters are so long, I feel 
that pressure to enjoy every second of it. And when you have limited energy and when you really have to manage what your body can do, summer can be a little bit overwhelming because you know that if you don't do the things that you want to do that are summer related during a three month period, it's going to be gone and it's going to be gone for like nine months. And so there is this urgency to try to fit in all the picnics that you can, all the swimmings that you can, all the camping that you can. And when you have limited energy, that can be exhausting. And together with the summer storms, that can be a recipe for flares. And then the worst thing you want is to be in one flare after the other in the summer because you want to enjoy the summer. So it's just such a hard place to be, you know? I have to keep reminding myself that I have to do what I can without triggering flares. Because if I do trigger flares, then I'm just gonna be in bed and I'll do anything anyways. So I might as well try to pack less things into the summer and enjoy what I do and not end up in a flare than to try to pack too much, if you know what I mean. The other thing that I've been trying to get to do a little bit more over the summer is to read more. I don't know what it is, but summer just has that laid back, relaxed feeling. There's nothing like lying on a picnic blanket, reading a book, eating watermelon. So I've kind of got back at reading again because after I had my concussion in 2018, I had a really hard time reading. I just could not concentrate. I would get headaches. I would have a really hard time comprehending what the meaning of the paragraph was that I was reading. I had to read it multiple times over and over again, and it was just frustrating. And so I just ended up consuming a lot more video form of entertainment because it was just a lot easier for me. I have always been a lot more of a visual learner. So for me, absorbing information is a lot easier in video form, but I do miss reading. There is just something special about reading because it's a slower pace and you can put it down and pick up again and there's so much more detail in reading than there is when we're watching a, a video or a movie so i picked up those reads for the summer um the way of the hermit and it's actually someone who i think he's a scotsman yeah from scotland um, but he lived in the wilderness of Canada. Oh my goodness, the thunder. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it. Um, he lived in the wilderness, like I think like the Northwest Territories or Yukon or something like that. I haven't read the book yet, but I just read like the, the information. It just sounds like a great summer read because I love wilderness and I love nature. And so I think that, that would fit right into the summer. And the next one is a little bit of poetry because I have been exploring a little bit more of a reflective tone to my videos, especially in the intros. And a lot of people seem to have enjoyed that. And now and then I write a little bit of poetry here and there and I have posted on my community page and on Instagram and people do seem to like it. So I'm kind of experimenting a little bit with it. I've never studied literature. I never studied English. English is not even my first language. And so I feel that by reading some poetry, I'm learning a little bit about structure and use of words. So I've been looking up words and synonyms and trezores and all that kind of fun stuff. And yeah, let me know what you guys think of this more reflective, poetic kind of side to my vlogs. I think it makes it for a nice little introduction. So yeah, let me know what you think. So my plan for the summer is 
to do low key activities like picnics like this picnic was super simple i literally just sliced some watermelon grabbed some hummus some berries some olives and that was it like super easy to put it together no preparation i don't have a cooler i just put it all in a little picnic basket brought it here and just put the emphasis on enjoying nature my son is fishing i'm enjoying the sounds of nature i'm enjoying my book and i think that's going to be the focus for me during the summer like simple enjoyable things had to manage these expectations by setting realistic goals and prioritizing activities that bring me joy without draining me. Sometimes it's about finding value in quieter, more restful moments, but it's still a loss and with that comes grieving. Grieving for the freedom I once had being able to do whatever my mind imagined without restrictions. But also grieving the future I imagined for myself, what I could have achieved without those chains weighing me down. I've grappled with frustration, it's hard not to. When your body refuses to cooperate and your spirit feels caged, it is incredibly disheartening. I've had to make peace with this new reality, accepting that my strength is not what it used to be and that my ambitions need to be reconsidered. These trials are teaching me that life isn't just about the big adventures or the grand projects. It's about finding beauty in the small moments, in the little escapes and in the simple act of being. Sometimes I feel I'm not the smartest student and I have to keep doing the lessons over and over again. But that's okay. Slowly I'm learning to find joy in the smaller scale of things, to appreciate the walks, the picnics and the stillness. And though this summer has been a struggle, it's also been a lesson in resilience and adaptability. It has given me a chance to practice mindfulness and intentionality, being fully present in the moments I have, no matter how small they may seem. Summer is a season of vibrant energy for many, but it's also okay to experience it at our own pace. Finding and following a rhythm can lead to more fulfilling and less pressured summer. And so, in the midst of the summer rush, I'm making peace within my own rhythm. Every journey, no matter how difficult, holds the potential for growth. I invite you to embrace the changes, find peace in the present, and remember that even in the struggle, there's beauty all around us. If we slow down and get really quiet and listen, will find ways to connect with the season. It's about adapting our expectations and finding joy in what we can manage. Embracing summer with a critic illness, it's about finding joy in the small, manageable slices of life. It's about sitting outside during a cooler part of the day, taking a short walk in nature, or enjoying a cold drink on a quiet evening. These moments, though seemingly small, are profound acts of resilience. They are affirmations that despite the challenges we face, we can still participate in the beauty of the season. 
And I know summer isn't always gentle. The heat can be unbearable and the summer storms can bring their own set of challenges. It's not always easy to navigate this terrain, especially when our bodies don't quite align with the season's demands. But I want to encourage you all to embrace summer in a way that honors where you are right now. Living with chronic illness means constantly adapting, finding ways to cope with a forever changing landscape. But it's also about hope, believing that after every storm there is a chance for new beginnings. So here's to making the most of summer days however we can. To embracing the light and the shadows and to finding our own kind of magic in every moment. Thank you for being here with me and remember, you are not alone in this journey and I'm not alone in this journey. I wanted to take a moment to say I really appreciate you. I really do and I hope you're doing well. Until next time, take care.